Hey guys, um, it's Grind the Sumo. Um, I'm gonna do another like walkthrough kind of thing on how I made this bass sound. <laughs> It's going to be similar to the last video, like I um, pretty much used the same techniques, I just sort of went about like making the initial patch in a different way and stuff. Um, it, it, it's kind of a different process but it's still the standard like start with operator, bounce it down to audio, um, do some more filtering, bounce it down again do some more effects and stuff, then put it into a sampler and do crazy stuff in there. Um, I'll be putting the, uh, you'll be able to download the patch um, if you want it um, for sampler and Ableton. Um, uh, yeah, it'll be like in the description. Um, so basically, <coughs> started off um, I'll just turn all these off it started off as this sound <laughs> so basically what I did to, to achieve that sound was um I started off with this waveform, like I just like set this um, oscillator as a sine wave and then drew in some random shapes here. Um, so that sound, uh, initially it sounded like this. Uh, wait, um, it sounded like this. Uh, this is just a separate sub that I I put underneath it. Um, uh, I'll turn the pitch envelope off as well. So that's pretty much what it sounded like completely by itself. Um, that's with glide turned on there, but that's just like a preference kind of thing. I just did that so that I could do like um, do these bendy notes with the MIDI. So then I like drew, I um, fed some of this um, oscillator into it and um, drew some more random stuff and it sounded like this. Um, I was going for quite like a hollow sound, if that makes any sense. Well, not hollow, but like it sounds like really gritty and there's like lots of space in between like the, the, um, I don't know how to describe it really, but that, that's the sound that I ended up with after drawing this stuff in. Um, then like, I'll get around to the automation afterwards. Then I fed some of this in, and it sort of made it a bit grittier again. Um, I was just like messing around with these basically, I didn't really know what I was doing to begin with. Um, so yeah. That's what I ended up with. Um, one second, my cat just wants to be let out. Okay, so yeah, so I had this, um, and then I turned this pitch envelope on, I set it to 100%, and I set the um, initial pitch up two octaves, so like it starts two octaves higher, and then 200, uh, 300 milliseconds, like that's what I set the delay to, um, it like, that 300 milliseconds later, that's when the actual pitch um like is sort of it's just like a big pitch bend at the start basically to make it more percussive so 
so that's with it that's without it um, and that's pretty much all I did here apart from this automation which was pretty random I just like basically wanted um, some movement in it sorry if that was really loud um, turn it down a bit now um, so yeah I just like did some random automation with with these values um, and that's pretty much all this patches um, then what I did was I um, basically just um, um, dropped another operator into a separate chain and copied um, the settings for the the pitch envelope and things but they like just kept it as a as a um, as a sine wave you can't really um, with the lower pitch notes you can't really tell the difference all that much but it just kind of like kept the sub clean because I just affected the um, I just had the effects and things on the actual um, like the, the mid-range patch um, and like left the sub clean so it was a bit like less messed with um, and then what I did was I um, um, yeah I'm pretty sure that's everything in the actual patch then what I did was I um, did some filtering so I just like did some bandpass filtering that was like pretty random as well I just kind of like did it to the um, like I, I sort of um, tried to sort of do the automation to suit the notes that I'd picked if that made any sense it makes any sense um it's kind of like I'm not the best at like I normally just like randomly draw out automation and find parts that I could use later but I tried to make it a bit more like suited for the notes that I picked this time and then uh, I um, added another ch uh, added another chain with um, just a um, a low pass with some really subtle filtering so that some of the highs were kept in it and all the um, like basically just so that it didn't the band pass didn't take away too much of the sound. Oh wait, um, I forgot to turn the this this off. So it sounded like this. I'll just show you quickly what this sounded like without those effects because I forgot to turn them off earlier. So these sounded like this. So there is a bit of a difference there. Um, yeah, so after I did the automation for the low pass, which was pretty subtle, I just did it to kind of um, um, just add a bit more movement, I guess. Um, then I, first I added this phaser and I just um, automated the frequency a little bit. So it sounded like this. <laughs> Um, and then um, like it has quite a low dry wet that that's pretty much the only thing I changed them um, the feedback it's set to 0 0.79 um, and everything else is the same I just changed the dry wet in this and then automated the frequency um, then I added a chorus um, with um, I didn't automate anything on the chorus, I just set the amount to 3.6 milliseconds and the rate to 0 0.26 hertz and then I set the dry wet to 32% so it sounded like this 
Um, and then I just compressed it afterwards. Um, I, I um, turned the makeup up to 4.6, turned the ratio up to 10. The release is set to 1.2. The attack is set to 0 0.1. Um, so then I just bounced it out to audio. Um, yeah, I bounced it out to audio. And I did something slightly different this time. Uh, Wait, actually, it's on the. Uh, oh, okay, wait, yeah, that confused me a bit. Um, basically, like I, I did this volume automation first, um, but I put the fil. I, I, I did these filters after I did this, but I'll go through it all in order. So, um, um, I basically just did the same thing as in the other um, resampling tutorial. I um, took a bandpass and a notch filter and uh, um, assigned the frequencies for both of them to this macro knob and then um, just automated it like that. Um, that was pretty random but I did it to like I did it um, in a way that kind of um, accentuated this volume automation that I did because I did this volume automation first. Um, like, so I'll play the volume automation first without the filtering and then I'll play the filtering afterwards. So the volume automation is literally just like raising and lowering the volume to like exaggerate movement in, in, in the sound. Um, and this is what, like, it was pretty random at the time. Um, like, this is what I got from the actual um, volume automation. Uh, how can I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's this uh, automation line here. Um, so like, this is it without, and this is it with. Um, it was kind of just to, um, like, uh, basically like, sort of bring out character in the movement if that makes any sense I, I can't really explain explain it but it, it was kind of just to um like accentuate some of the movement that was in there and like some parts don't sound as good but it kind of makes up for it later on um then i added this filter automation um one thing that i didn't mention was i just like threw an eq onto a separate chain and like use that as like a like a dry wet signal so these filters didn't take away too much of the sound because I felt like um, when it was all um, when it was just these filters it was kind of um, it kind of muddied up the sound a bit because it was like um, like because this is like additive filtering I guess it was kind of um, it just made it sound a bit weird so I also like added this chain with just an EQ in so that like I could use that as like a like a dry signal to sort of mix it back in with the original sound so after the filtering it sounded like this um the filtering's this automation but just to let you know <laughs> I did for this part. Um, then I bounced it out, down to audio again. Um, oh, this is still frozen. 
So that's what the audio looked like after all the volume automation and stuff. And then I basically just like um, put this EQ on it and cut out everything below 30 hertz because it was getting a, a bit muddy at that point. Um, and I put this amp on it, but it's only got like a, it's a really low dry wet. It's, I haven't changed any of these settings. I just set it to the, the rock setting and only the dry wet is only at 5.56% um, and it was just to like add a little bit more grit. <laughs> literally all I did then and then I bounced that out again um, and this one I'm pretty yeah I didn't do anything for this one this is literally just the audio clip that came from that so I won't bother playing that to you um, and then I did the same thing as in the last tutorial and threw it into a sampler um, I didn't loop it or anything. What I did was um, I went into, to begin with, um, I went into this, the MIDI tab and I turned the pitch bend range up to 24 semitones and I set, uh, I assigned the velocity to sample offset and then set that, the amount, uh, amount A to 100. So basically what that does is depending on um, how much velocity um there is um it'll start from a start from a different point in the sample um so like if you have like a velocity sensitive um midi controller like if you press it the key really hard well not really hard but the harder you press the key the further along in the sample it'll start from i'm pretty sure um so i basically use that um to change the the sample the um, I use the velocity to change the sample start um, from like in the MIDI clip basically. Um, so then what I did was I um, um, turned the soft shaper on and turned the amount up to um, uh, uh, Google Chrome just opened for some reason. That was weird. Um, yeah, anyway. I um, turned the amount up to 63 and I turned the volume up to negative 8 because I felt like it was too loud um, at 0 dB. Um, so then what I did was I I turned the, the amount for the, well I turned the pitch envelope on and I turned the amount to plus 21 semitones, apparently. Um, and I um, put a macro on this decay time. Um, I haven't automated it, but it gives you the option to like, um, do like tape stop kind of things. Uh, I'll show you an example in a minute. Um, I turned glide on and I, set a, a macro for um, the glide time as well so you can like make uh, like make the time shorter or longer depending on what you need it to be basically um i turned the fm on um i s set the type to triangle and turned the course to four because i i felt like that's what sounded the best and I set another macro um, for the volume so I could automate the FM um, and that is everything that I did in the sampler then what I did was I put a saturator on after the sampler and um, uh, set the drive to 4db um, turn the bass down to 12.6 um, set the width and depth to um, like all the way basically um, and then assigned another macro for the frequency like I did last time um, then this is literally just to, 
turn the sound down a bit because it was like really loud <laughs> so I just turned it down by 16 decibels um, this is actually um, I use this instead of side chaining I basically just automated like um, the gain like so whenever um, the kick drum plays it just like pushes um, pushes the sound out the way temporarily so like the the um, transient from the kick is what like what gives it the um, I don't know how to explain it um, just so like so it doesn't take away from the kick sound basically and then I just compressed it a bit more um, it was pretty overly compressed at this point but I thought it sounded a bit better with more compression anyway um, and yeah that that's like how I made the patch and then what I did was um, I'll just play what it sounds like quickly Um, I'll turn this off. Can't really show you any better than that at the moment, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically what I did then was I drew out these notes and I just did like a really simple like um, um, drum pattern. It's like nothing special whatsoever. It's like really crappy actually. Oops, I've just sort of this. literally all I did because I couldn't really be asked doing anything else um, so yeah that, I, I'll show you the automation that I did with these macros quickly um, this is more just like a I, I was just messing around at this point basically this doesn't really have much to do with the actual base patch you can do whatever you want with this stuff now but um, I'll just show you what I did quickly um, so I already showed you the um, the, the automation that I did with the utility um, so here basically I um, automated the volume of the um, in fact I'll just rename this FM quickly because that's what it is um, um, so yeah this is um, this is FM automation Um, what I'll do is I'll copy this over quickly and I'll get rid of all this automation so you can hear what it sounds like without it all. <laughs> that's what it sounds like without the automation and I basically just um, automated this FM a little bit um, just to make it sound half reasonable I did this all really quickly I only spent like 20 minutes 15 20 minutes on it uh, just because I wanted to do a tutorial on the sound um, then here what I did was I automated the saturator um, I'll also rename that. Um, those can stay the same, I guess. Um, so yeah, I just like um, automated the saturate frequency to accentuate like the parts of the sound that I wanted to be um, saturated um, or whatever, like. I explained that in the last video. So yeah, that's pretty much how I ended up with this. Um, 
um, what I can show you quickly is um, I'll just make a new uh, let's go with G the note that I, I did it in. Um, bring it all the way down so it starts at the start. So I'll just show you quickly what this um, decay time for the pitch envelope does. Basically, like if you start it like really high, like up here, it'll work kind of like a tape stop. Um, So if you start the pitch envelope decay like up here, not the saturator, it'll work like a tape stop. That's a really bad example. If I quickly um, turn the sustain mode on and just loop it here or something, yeah, you'll get a better idea of what I mean. That kind of stuff. Um, um, so like if I did like a, a pitch band on that as well, it would sound like really crazy. thing I can really show you is the glide time which is just, um, just determines how long it takes for <laughs> should probably get rid of all that stuff uh, so the glide time just um, it just uh, determines how long it'll take for the you guys probably already know this but I thought I'd explain it anyway um, it determines how long it'll take for the pitch band to like reach the new point if that makes any sense so if i turn it all the way up here it'll take quite a lot it'll take um 10 seconds for the pitch band to finish so like it's slowly slowly raising to this note and it'll take 10 seconds for it to get from here to here um, if I turn it all the way down, it'll take 0 0.1 milliseconds. And so you can use this to like figure out like how, exactly how how fast you want it to pitch bend. I use this to like um, uh, sometimes like I change it if I want to do like um, sort of like slow pitch bends like on longer notes if that makes sense um, but yeah that, that's pretty much all I have to show you today um, I'll just play it one more time I guess <laughs> sure I changed something there doesn't matter anyway um, so yeah um, you'll be able to download the patch in the description well there'll be a link for it in the description um, and I'll be doing more tutorials soon I'll catch you guys later